Welcome to D-Mop Garage. It's raining outside. Sorry about the pitter patter on the roof. Uh, we're back on the Krankenwagen, the 52 barn door ambulance. Playlists in link below if you want to catch up from previous episodes. We have the bumper bar installed. Well, it's kind of sitting in there. I haven't bolted it in yet, but uh, yeah, I think it looks a little bit nicer than having the red accents on there. I think it was a little bit too much with the red, but uh, I'm sure someone will probably say otherwise. Anyway, that's done. Uh, we are going to change our focus today on the semaphores or the trafficators, depending on where you are in the world, what you call them. Here they are. Now, there is a crack in that one. We're going to try and repair it because as you can tell, these are original 1952 semaphores and they bloody work which i can't believe i have tested them with the six volt battery this is a brand new optima i'm a big fan of these batteries and i'll tell you why i had a yellow top optima back in 1997 and i put that into my leyland p76 uh show car street machine and it's still going today it still cranks the v8 over and it it's like i actually sent a, a an email to optima saying i don't know what you guys are putting in your batteries but 1997 to 2023 and it's still going strong so my trick is i always turn it off with a isolator switch and it's on a trickle charger all the time now whether that's got anything to do with it or not who knows but anyway it works so this is a six volt version now I know a few people are going to say, yeah, but it's a modern battery. It's going to look like shit in there, blah, blah, blah. Well, no, because what we're going to do, we're going to put this into a fake uh, old battery box, modify it so that it looks like a stock old school battery. And it's quite small, as you can see. But these things last forever. If you look after them, don't ever let them go uh, completely dead flat because then they will uh, pack up on you. Now, we're going to refurbish these suckers because they are, you know, the, the lenses need to come off. We're going to repair that one and just clean them up they're working somewhat one of them does click open the other one sort of half ass goes up and down anyway let's disassemble and start doing the clean down process and go from there okay so the first thing we're going to do is we need to take off this outer uh, piece of metal and you can see there there is a slotted screw let's see how easy this guy is going to want to come out and pretty easy now as you can see here we have our little screw we have this brass piece now to get the lens off and this one does actually have a globe in it and it did light up so we'll take the globe out there's the globe now we're going to undo this little sucker here and that probably is oh it's got a okay we might need to or not i don't like it when this happens yeah there's the nut there on the other side so potentially a little bit of wd-40 we might have to let that soak for a while and what i might do also is just put this into the vise on this section here and so i've got a bit more purchase on this to get that screw off so let's have a crack at that Come with a larger screwdriver with a bit more torque. Right, done. That undid it. Screw, put that one away. Now, this should just come off now. There's also Zevaya and, oh, okay. So it looks like they've gone and glued, glued in there. It looks like it is glued in there. K2618, that's our serial number on the back of it. Okay, what we might have to do is just keep that apart from that. And we're gonna try to just clean up this lens. Uh, just using some, some of these little shop towelettes. These are pretty good. Yeah, it's taken the dirt off. You can see that. And it's going to have to get that paint off in a different method. Alright, it is taking the paint off very slowly. There you go, took the paint off, go for the other side now, just that little bit of rubbing, I think it just needed to soak it a little bit. Now 
Now what I want to do now is just get some alcohol and we'll give that a wipe. Righto guys, so after a little bit of a cleaning, you can see our semaphores are looking rather special now. We're going to test them out, but basically the plunger is working good. I put a little bit of WD-40 in them. I gave them a, a very fine glass bead blast. I obviously uh, covered up all the copper, um, but you can look at the terminals, you know, they look they look brand new again now. The whole the whole bloody unit looks brand new pretty much. I've just put a bit of WD-40 on it just to clean up the action of it. And that one's working really nice. Cleaned up the lens as well on that one. And same on this one here. So this action here is working good. It locks in. And then you've got that little returning spring there. Now, you can go the extra step and pull these apart, but you need some special pins. And if you have a look here, you have to drill that little tiny pin there out, and then you've got to replace it with something that's going to, you're going to be able to bull pin it over on both sides. And I don't have that, so this is the next best thing. But uh, we're going to test these now on the, on the vise with the 6-volt battery and see whether this mechanism is popping up and down on both of them. So let's set up just here. Okay, so we're just testing this second one here. So we've got the positive on here and negative on the body. And we'll just make sure that this one is working. Hopefully they're not touching. Yep. Beautiful. That works well. We'll double check the other one quickly. And positive on this terminal here, just for the first test. Now we don't want you to earth out, please. Beautiful. So that part works. Now what we're going to do is put an inspection light onto this one, and that's got to earth out and turn the light on too. That'll signify whether the globe's going to work. But we'll, we can do that once I put it all back together, but they're clean. They look good. We can uh, reassemble. Let's go. Okay, guys, so I got an old red T-shirt. Or actually, sorry, an old pair of red undies. <laughs> and we just glued on the, the cotton there just to protect the, the copper. So that's all done. And these things are almost ready to get reassembled. I've got to get uh, just some insulation. I'm going to get some of that liquid uh, insulation just to go over the wire here. Because I don't want to. I don't want to disconnect it and then have to shrink wrap it. And I haven't got any shrink wrap anyway, so I'm just waiting for that to come in the mail. And then we can actually assemble and put the globes back in and go from there. So that little brass, well, I suppose it lives in here like that, which grabs the globe. Unfortunately, one of them was missing, so I just fabricated it out of a little bit of sheet steel there. So that should do the job. And the other thing I've just been doing off camera, and that's the, the badge off it, is the horn and uh, now the horn uh this is the siren i would imagine because i do already have a horn uh under there which you guys would have seen me restore that one this one here is going to mount on the bumper bar right here it actually lives right like that and that will be the i think they alternate between the two to get the to get that sort of sound happening um but what the front half was pretty knackered so I sandblasted it and painted it, and if we come up over here, you'll see the air cleaner too. I got that. Look how shiny that sucker came up. Uh, this is the horn. So that's done, and that's the internal part of the horn, which you actually see all that. So they're just drying. I'll, let, I'll leave them for a couple of days in the bracketry and whatever else. But yeah, those things are just some other little finalized parts that we've got to do. Yeah, we'll just keep going from that. Okay, so now that we have to wait for that insulation for the semaphores, we're going to direct our focus back to the floor. And now this is what we've done inside here in the rear section. I've got the 2 or 3mm MDF, which is just going to be down on the bottom onto the actual metal. And then now we've got the ply, which is on top. And you can see there's a recess for the tracks. And then they're kind of cut out. And I'll just put up a photo of the original one. So you can see the underneath is actually a light grey painted. And then on top is 
the the vinyl that we're going to put on top of it so that's how it was done at the factory it's kind of a bit of a weird concept i suppose they wanted the thing level so i've got the right thickness i need to go and get a little bit of uh trimming for here uh some aluminium trim that runs around these and it actually runs right up the sides i suppose that's just to protect the timber when you're putting the um the seat in and out so one more section to do uh, obviously the ply doesn't come wide enough so we have to have it in segments but that's okay it'll be all covered in vinyl and let's chop out the last section and get it put in okay so we've got pretty much the floor sorted i still have to screw and glue it down and obviously whatever you see white there has to be a light gray and then the vinyl will get put on top of the timber this is just sitting in there for now i'm not sure about that gap there for the rail so i need to just grab the chair and test it at least that part's ticked off i mean we've still got all the door cards to make as well and you know things aren't edited on this channel too much because <laughs> have a look what's happened over here so we've got a leak unfortunately this seal here did not work um i don't know whether it's the seal itself or the little o-ring i've got a feeling it's the o-ring because i just noticed yesterday there was gearbox oil dripping out the back and the thing hasn't even been driven yet so bit of a uh, disheartening moment but you know mistakes happen like this and you've got to catch them and i've had to order another seal kit so we're kind of going backwards now one other issue i did have is i didn't have the spring plates on the right splines they were a little bit off and the bus was sitting a little bit cockeyed and i didn't notice it until i was walking down the driveway so i've had to take all this off and oh mate yeah it took about six six goes to get the inner and outer splines correct so that it would sit level the weird thing now is is this um drum is sitting higher up and you've got to let the air out of the tire to get the damn thing on because it's it's touching on the guard so that wasn't planned as well which is very annoying on the on the plus side we do have the volants mounted we've got the rubber I've kept it in one piece all the way around. I didn't cut it. And the air cleaner is finished. So that's all mounted and bolted in. I did have to make the bracket as per the original. I just scratch built that from some steel. And uh, we also have the inner tinware. That's pretty much all complete. I've just got a little bit of wiring here to do. Obviously the reflectors are on. I gave this a bit of a polish as well just a bit of cut and polish that's coming up really nice that's tacked on in position and i'm also just working on the tailgate here and had a couple of little cracks on the on the corner here I'm, i've had to touch up and then we can start um, putting all the, the brake light and number plate light as well get that mounted and then we can get that bolted in so that's one other job ticked off you know all these little tiny jobs they take ages you think it's all going to be ready i mean those frames as you know they take ages to put together too i haven't even done those i might get the rubbers in the doors i just wanted to leave the driver's door off because we've still got this mess here to deal with so yeah onwards and onwards so let's keep going okay so the semaphore update is we've got them all completed what i used was a little bit of this liquid electrical tape so it's kind of a gooey stuff you can see there i've just put it around the terminal so we don't get a short but i can show you let's just pop this one over here pop it in the vise here and i can give you a little test put the negative terminal on the body of the semaphore and then we'll just touch this onto the positive that one's going to go onto the positive terminal and there we go flashing led that we've put inside and we've got a working semaphore so all good now they are done we do have a problem <laughs> there's always a problem isn't there now the leads have been cut up in the stalk in here so i'm going to have to reroute the wires out and then add some sections to them because it's not long enough and yeah torture that's all back together i've got another kit hopefully fingers crossed we're not going to get another gearbox leak because i really hate gearbox leak i have just been playing around with this engine lid here it just had a little bit of sort of stuff on the bottom that wasn't fantastic so just been touching up a little bit of paint along the bottom here just to make it look a little bit more respectable i think that part's done we can continue on we might even just get these semaphores uh, mounted yeah we'll drop this sucker down and keep going so i've got one of the semaphores hooked up and let's just give it a bit of a test to make sure it works there we go beautiful
Unreal. Works perfectly. All right, on to the other side. Okay, well now that those both semaphores are working, we have to uh, get our focus on this. So this I'm definitely not going to film for you guys because <laughs> it's boring, but I've got two fuse boxes. I mean, look, everything's there. It's just, I've just got to clean it up and chop out a lot of this crap here that they've gone and put joiners and get rid of this ignition as an aftermarket ignition that they've gone and put in so we'll piss that off get rid of it just get this sorted out then i can get the pod mounted and uh, we'll go from there okay guys so it's the next day i've done a little bit of work to that i've just been playing around with the fuse box you can see there i went and sandblasted it and cleaned up all the terminals because they were all rusted and seized up so that one's ready to go we just i've put the pod uh in and obviously we've got to mount those fuse boxes in either side so i'll get to it in the meantime i've just also been playing around with the floor i've got to do some painting to this and also drill some holes because inadvertently uh there were some holes in the floor here that i welded up <laughs> and i shouldn't have because they were they were the ones to actually mount the seats down here so i've got to redrill a couple of holes and i also left a message down in there you can see uh for probably someone in another 60 years when they actually uh, rip up the floor to re-restore this they'll see my little message there saying get onto youtube and have a look at demop garage <laughs> i'll be long gone by then but yeah whatever eh immortalized on youtube Woo! <laughs> anyway that's where the two seats are going also the seat that runs on these rails here i had to play around with that uh because the they've got these little bearings here and they were all seized up so i had to free those suckers up and anyway they're working that's obviously got to be reupholstered so that'll be one more thing uh back hat hatches on i got that sorted that was a little bit of mucking around because we had issues with this uh this stay here actually wasn't long enough i had to custom made make a little section on it here and make it longer because the geometry was all out and it wouldn't shut completely so now it's fixed that's all sorted i've got these the brake light and that guy sorted so that's all done yeah just ticking off little bits and pieces but <laughs> as you can see it's a very cracking day out here might be might be time for it to go for a paddle but i think it might be a little bit too windy i don't know yeah it's kind of looking a bit windy i'll go down and have a quick look at the beach that'll probably do it guys all right well we'll see you in the next up update it's getting closer. Yeah, next week back at Oven Boys, we're back on the Beatles. So I'll see you in that episode as well. You.